Ken here with you again. This is DC practice assessment number one, part B. T4 to T5 this time. These are the topic areas from the national training package. So just a quick rundown on how this assessment uh, works. Step one, the video will pose a question or a problem. At this point, you pause the video and attempt the question. Step two, continue the video and I'll provide you with a small hint or an idea of how the problem should be solved. Again, pause the video and complete the question if required. Step three, continue the video and a full explanation and the answer will be provided. Step four, continue the video on until the next question and we just repeat the process. So question one, how much work is done when a force of 4.5 newtons is used to move a trolley through a distance of, four point, of 46 meters, I should say. So 4.5 newtons moving a trolley across 46 meters. How much work is done? So pause here. Here's your hint. Uh, amount of effort is force times distance. So this was simply just the force of 45 newtons multiplied by 46 meters, which gives you 207 joules, which was uh, option C. Question two, power in relation to an electric motor can be described as A, the force applied by a machine to turn the shaft in newtons per meter, B, the rate at which work is done by a machine in joules per second. C, the conversion of energy from one form to another. D, the ability of a motor to do work measured in joules. So pause here while you think about your answer, A, B, C or D. Here's your hint, what is power actually measured in? Can you remember what power is measured in? So the answer for this question was power in relation to an electric motor can be described as B, the rate at which work is done by the machine measured in joules per second. Question three, if the voltage applied to a resistive load is doubled, the power dissipated will be A, will increase by four times, B, will remain unchanged, C will double or D will halve. So pause here. Here's your hint, get out your Ohm's law wheel and have a look. What's the relationship that you need to be thinking about here, about between voltage and power? Have a look on your Ohm's law chart. So the answer is A will increase by four times. There's a squared relationship between power and voltage. Power will increase or decrease by the square of the voltage. Question four, typically current consuming devices are rated in terms of what? So if you go and buy something at the shops, typically consuming devices, current consuming devices are rated in terms of what? A, power and current, B, resistance and power, C, voltage and resistance, or D, voltage and power. Your hint is on an appliance like a fry pan or a toaster, how is it rated? If you turn the fry pan upside down, what's the rating? So appliances, particularly heating appliances, are measured in the voltage required to operate them and the power. So if you get a frying pan, it might have operating voltage of 230 volts and be a, have a power of maybe 2.4 kilowatts. Question four, in relation to the diagram below, Determine the power consumed by the resistor when switched on. So I've got a 200 volt supply and a 36 ohm resistor. 
So pause here while you think about and do the calc. Here's your hint. If you didn't already guess, it's use your Ohm's law calculator wheel. And here's the answer. Power equals V squared divided by R. So the power is 200 squared divided by 36. So that comes out at 1,111 watts, or you could round that to 1.1 kilowatts. Question 5. A 2.2K ohm resistor has a power rating of 20 watts. Determine the maximum voltage that can be applied across the resistor without causing damage to it. So how much power can we sorry how much voltage can we put across our 2.2 kilowatts our 2.2 kilo ohm resistor at 20 watts again just get out your ohms law formula sheet it should be reasonably obvious so this time we're looking for the formula and uh, I'll just turn the pen on. So voltage. And this is the one we're looking for here. Is the square root of P times R. So we know what the power is. They told us the resistor had 20 watts. And we know what the resistance value is. So we can work our way back from those two values to voltage. So it's the square root of 20 times 2200 which means that we could put a voltage of 209.8 volts, that's the max we could put across, and it won't produce any more than our 20 watts. Question six, what are the two basic risks arising from current flow in a residential installation? A, direct contact and fire. B, mechanical damage and earth faults. C, electric shock at high temperatures, or D, fire and explosion. So what are the two basic risks arising from current flow in residential installations? Here's your hint. What are the aspects of electrical current? Write out all the characteristics of electrical current and think about how they apply in a domestic installation. So the answer is electric shock at high temperatures. So if insulation breaks down, you might get an electric shock, or if we get high currents, then cables will get hot and high temperatures can occur. And of course that can lead to fires. Question seven. If you are able to double the current in a conductor, this would cause what? If you were to double the current in a conductor, this would cause what? A. Heating effect would be halved. B. Heating effect would increase. C. Magnetic field would be reversed. Or D. The conductor's resistivity would be doubled. So pause here while you think about it. Here's your hint. Think about the effects of an electrical current. There are always at least four effects. Electrical current always creates at least four. So what are those four might fit here? So the answer here, the one that would increase, heating effect. If you were to double the current in a conductor, the heating effect would increase. A says the heating effect would be halved. No, 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 it would not go down, it would go up. Magnetic field would be reversed. Well. It wouldn't matter which way the magnetic field was, it wouldn't make any difference. And the conductor's resistivity would be unchanged. So the only proper answer or sensible answer would have been heating effect would increase. Question 8. Electroplating utilises which electrical current's properties? Electroplating utilises electrical current's properties. So does it utilise magnetic effect, heating effect, 
kinetic effect or chemical effect. So pause here while you think about it. Again, list all the effects of an electrical current and which one would apply for electroplating. So electroplating has to do with chemicals, chemistry, and moving ions through liquids. So electroplating doesn't have anything to do with magnetic, heating, or kinetic. It's a chemical effect. Question 9. Metal corrosion occurs due to what? A. Electrolytic action. A. B. Salt. D. Rust. Sorry, C. Rust or D. Atmosphere. So metal corrosion occurs due to. So pause here while you think about it. Here's your hint. All corrosion is based on what? So it says metal corrosion occurs due to what? So the answer is electrolytic action. So salt, salt itself doesn't actually cause the corrosion, even though it can be part of the process. Rust is the result of corrosion. And the atmosphere can um, help with corrosion, but it's not what causes it. It's electrolytic action that actually causes corrosion. Question 10, AS3000 requires that electrical installations are provided with two forms of protection from electric shock. What are they? So A, direct and indirect contact using insulation and circuit breakers. B, direct and indirect contact using insulation and safety circuit breakers. C, direct and indirect contact using installation and physical barriers. D, direct and indirect contact using a combination of circuit breakers. So a bit for you to think about there, so pause here. So ask yourself the question, why is protection actually required? And if so, how can we achieve it? The answer in this case is D, sorry, is B, direct and indirect contact using insulation and safety circuit breakers. So most cables are covered in a plastic insulation to keep you away from the conductor itself and we must use safety circuit breakers. So that brings us to the end of DC assessment practice uh, number one, part B. And again, I hope you've enjoyed that and have got some good learning out of those answer explanations.